One West Magazine, One West Radio. It's your boy P. Flicks, Damian Sanders, holding it down for the West Coast from the tip to the top. From Seattle to San Diego, y'all already know what time it is. Shouts out to the big homie, the CEO, OG Suicide, for laying on that One West Magazine foundation. Now, tonight, I got some very special guests in the house, man. My, my boys, they've been doing their thing for a long time. I got the man in the house, man. He's the king of the G Fund all day long. And if you don't know, you're about to find out. Got his new project coming out right now. And he's going to tell us all about it right here on One West Radio. I got the man himself straight out of the P-Town. Cocaine in the house, man. What's up, OG? What it do, fam? Big up. Big up, man. I'm glad y'all got us on this platform. Big up, so OG suicide. One wins. Man, and you do know that, man. Now, first of all, man, I want to take the time to thank you for taking the time to come on this show. And I ain't no problem, man. You know, whatever one last call, I got to be there, man. That's how we do that unity. Now, let's get right into it, man. I know we got our man on the phone as well, man. We got the legendary Mr. Show Chop on the phone. Y'all got a hot single out right now that's just blazing all over One West Radio and heavy rotation. Plastic Surgery, man. Tell us about that joint right there and what inspired that. Well, Plastic Surgery is really, it's really metaphorically uh, speaking. And uh, when I shot the idea to uh, Short Chop, it was just, you know, it was just like second nature because we got a chemistry together. And the song is just, you know, talk about fake, all the fake stuff that's going on, Hollywood. You know, different other things that we were clowning on. So we put it together, you know, with a theory track. Because my young nephew out of Portland uh, produced the track, Theory. Okay. And uh, it just was right. You know what I'm saying? And it came out just like that, plastic surgery. Now, you and Mr. Short Shot, man, y'all ain't no strangers to making hits, man. Y'all got together on his project, you know what I'm saying, back in the day on that Dollars Dank and Drink all day long, you know, produced by Battle Cat. Now, Short Shot, man, now, how, how, how did you like when um, Cocaine hit you up to be, to, uh, to be a part of this project? You know what? He hit me, man. Me and Coke stay in contact, man. So when he hit me, I was just like, man, it ain't nothing. Let's do it. And he shot me the music, you know what I'm saying? And, uh... I, I hit him with the verse. I wasn't really feeling my verse too much. I told him, I'm like, man, just whatever you want to do with it. And, you know, he ran with it. And that's the rap, huh? Now, all day long, man, that song is definitely banging, man. We got it in heavy rotation on One West Radio. Now, let's press the reset button right. right quick, man, because this project, man, it's a really big project, man. It's paying homage to my man that's been doing his thing for a very long time, man, crowning him the king of the G-Funk, a very well-deserved title all day long. Now, tell us, Cocaine, man, now, what really not, when, when, when did you come up with the title to this project right here and say it was time to um, put out that king of G-Funk project? Well, you know, it's really rest in peace to my boy KMG from above the law, who's one of the architects of G-Funk, uh, an originator. And, uh, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. We, you know, above the law and cocaine has been in the game really for 25, 26 years. And uh, our time, our music was, you know, that we brought to the table, Rufus Records was t uh -huh. And, you know, with the influence that Above the Law, and myself had, and you know, over here mixing up with Dr. Dre, you know, it was just something. It was just a sleeping giant waiting to get exposed. And, you know, I can look back 25 years later and I'm humbled. So going back to KMG, rest in peace KMG, we, we had did a video like around four months, you know, prior to him passing. And, uh, he brought a t he brought a t shirt and he said he put it on me. He said, "This is man, you really are the king of defunct, man. I want you to wear this." You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I never really was concerned about entitlement. You know what I'm saying? That I'm this and I'm that because at the end of the day, I'm a king of my own castle. Eight children, buried 25 years. That's what I'm a king of. But out of respect of just doing something and making a major contribution for the West Coast. You know, this is no I have nothing to do with arrogance after you've been crushing grapes, you know, to drink fine wine for years. You know what I'm saying? It's now time to step up and step into them shoes. So, you know, looking back years later, fam, with, with thousands and thousands of features and, you know, being over millions of records sold, you know, this is the most recorded voice in the history of, of, of the music industry. So it speaks for itself, man. It's... it's, it's don't have really nothing to do with entitlement, but out of this particular sound, cocaine is the king of that G-Funk sound. 
Now, once again, this is Ron West Radio, man. Got my man Cocaine on the line now. Since you taking that, that that humble lane, which you really don't have to all day long, so I guess I'll put this out there now. I heard in some circles, man, like they, they mentioned, I heard you did some um, interviews in the past. Some folks said Above the Law could have been even bigger than um, what N.W.A. was, you know what I'm saying, you know, to, to the rap game. Now, what do you feel when people say that right there? Do you think that um, the, the Above the Law movement could have even been bigger than it was? Oh, well, of course, man. You got to realize, man. You got to look at the words that came out of our camp, fam, when you think about it. You got to look at balling. It was the first one to say balling on records. KMG, rest in peace, was the first one to say chronic on records. We was the first one to say G-Funk on record. Now, tell me the albums that it had influence. Look at Dr. Dre's chronic. Look at even to the elements of being influenced with Warren G. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so definitely. what we originated, we was like, you know, like DLC, the NWA was cocaine to above the law. I remember there was times in 1990, man, we used to drive and, and we lived in Colton, California, fam, on me. And this was Warren G. Stay with us, fam, for real. So we would drop, drop Warren off to Santa Ana and then me and Hutch would go to Audio Achievements in Torrance where NWA Studio was at. So I would be humming the tune, and our kid would be humming the tune, we'd be on the way to the studio and see Hutch, Hutch is the original, and we are the architects of that deep funk plant. So Hutch was like our Quincy Jones, yeah. just like Dr. Dre was to Snoop. Now I definitely you know wanted, I definitely wanted so, to ask you know, that question. When, when, when Above the Law, when, going back to real quick, when Above the Law, you know, was coming about. They was the first one riding in paddy wagons. It was crazy. And, and Jerry Eller had said that because it was the actual truth. Easy knew that. A lot of people knew that. If Easy didn't, if Easy didn't pass, a lot of shit would have been different. Bottom line. And it's not hating on nobody, of course. I'm just telling you the hardcore facts. Now, definitely, you, you know what I'm saying? Above the law was, 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 you know what I'm saying? Even when you look at the NWA movie, it really doesn't. You know, all due respect to the movie, but it doesn't really go into depth. But, you know, they probably couldn't put everything in there in time like you said. But at the same time, above the law, when some folk went down, they the ones who shut down the new music seminar, man. They was the most controversial group in the game, fam. All day long now. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not, so, I'm not know, sure. I'm not sure. Now, I know I know this wasn't in the movie, man, but am I correct? Um, Didn't J.J. Fad's record come out first? Well, of course. See, a lot of things is based upon that J.J. Fad record because it took N.W.A. crossover. You know what I'm saying? That was a very important record for Rufus Records. You know, so big ups to, you know, the queens of the West Coast because without that record, you know what I'm saying? It, it wouldn't gave the light of day you know, to a lot of other doors that got opened up, even for the NWA movement and for all of us. Now, once you again. You know, and rest in peace, and people would rest in peace, DJ Trey. Because they, you know, back when Supersonic was out, yeah. you gotta realize, man, that sold a lot of records, homie. Yeah. So it was easy for Jerry Eller, you know, with the connections that he knew. And with, with Eric and all, they made that camaraderie between each other because a lot of people talk crap about Jerry Heller. But you gotta look at it if you like him or don't, don't like him. He was a very important part to this whole West Coast movement. Now, but on, you gotta take your hat off, even if you don't like him <laughs> or if you love him. Now, on that but note, see, right with there. That JJ Fan record, with that JJ Fan record, you know, that's the reason why. Not to cut you off, brother. No that's problem. the reason why. You know what I'm saying? When this happened, ABC happened. Now, all day long, I want to um, expound upon that on that note right there now. Talk about impact on the whole West Coast movement. Now, some of my favorite songs out there when I really got introduced to um, the funk, you know what I'm saying, like from Cocaine all day long was that first project, that Above the Law, Uncle Sam's Curse. Now, tell us about the impact that you feel that that record right there had on the game. Oh, man, we was we was on to it. You know, after Above the Law did Little Right Hustlers, you know, we was doing all kind of stuff from uh, Black Mafia, El- Messing with Elements of Vocally Pimping. Who Am I? You remember my album came out in 1991. That's the same project I had, a single called Nickel Slick Nigga that came out on the same cover Snoop them on B cover soundtrack. So we was, like, headed towards that, and we were always 
you know, influenced by, by, you know, our peers, you know, from Isaac Hayes, even to our uncle, yeah. even to my dad. You know, my uncle was Willie Hutch, and my dad, you know, he was a writer of Motown. So we would always have that type of revolutionary music. And, you know, that record right there is a footnote in West Coast history, Uncle Sam's Curse. But you got to realize all them great songs that came out of there from, from uh, 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 Black Superman to, to, to all the way to the arc of it. If you look at that record and you listen to that album, it's a trip because it's exactly what's going on in society today. So what we were doing right there, you know, the difference between the music now, the popular music now, we were really more on substance. And that's what really what t Force was about. It was about putting all the struggle, all the good times, all the, you know, that's what funk was. Oh, yeah. And it's so different than what Black Parliament and them did in the 70s. They took, they took their ghetto fabulous times, you know, from hustling in the game to everything, and it rolled up into their music. That's why what we were able to do, we didn't think about setting records with this originating of G-Funk, we would just love doing music because it was in us and not on us. And you do know that now. I just want to say congratulations. You just dropped the video for that single, um, Plastic Surgery, with you and Short Shot, man. Now tell us a little bit more about that right there, G. Man, I'm happy. It's on my site, buddyboyent.com. Let me spell it and slow it down for everybody. It's B U D E. B-O-Y-E-N-T dot com. The video's up there. You know, a shop by my boy Paul Silver and Carlo. And it's, it's edited by my son. You know, it's always good to have the family fit into it. You know, my son, Big Upside from Nas, who re-edited that video. And, uh, you know, the fans are re- responding to it heavy. You know, Big Ups to my international movement on it. They're loving it. They're talking good on top. They talk good on coke. They talk good on the West Coast. It's just, it, it is what it is. It's just like one West. That's what it is. Now, all day long now, um, on, on the King of G Fun project, now we, we know you got y'all niggas on there banging. You got the, the hot joint plastic surgery on there. Now, what else can we expect from that project right there? Man, this album's crazy, man. I went back to the elements and, you know, I had to, had to take, it took me about a year to really, really, uh, get everything together how I want it. So, you know, on this particular project, man, I had to reach back to Uncle George Clinton. You know what I'm saying? I, I had to I had to get my guy Snoop Dogg on there because we stay on point like Stacey Adams. And you do know and that. back at it again. And, you know, um, Exhibit's on there, Big Trade D. You know what I'm saying? Corrupt. Man, there's a lot of goodies on there. I don't want to say, too, I don't want to open up the cat too, but bag too much. But the documentary is coming out in January. The documentary number one is out right now. It's doing real good. So at this time, we just, you know, just King of G-Fun campaign, really going strong uh, with this plastic surgery. We got a strong social presence. You know, it's starting to pick up on the P1 and P2 stations. And we just can't continue out here like Republicans and Democrats. Now, dig that now. You know what I'm saying? We doing our damn thing. You dig? Now, now if you a, if you a fan of cocaine, man, like you really gotta love this because th- th- he's that that um that gift that keeps on giving all day long. Now you just dropped the um shut the fuck up and cut the check project. That was off the chain. Got one of my favorite songs on there with Matt Lucci, that pimping juice. I'm loving that. That's also in live rotation on One West Radio now. Now, now, now you got this King of G Funk project coming out already. Now tell us what motivates you to keep it pushing every day. Oh man, God, the good Lord, man, that's my secret. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's way when you put when you put God first, you go past anything that's your own understanding. And when I wake up in the morning and able to praise God. My beautiful queen, I've uh, been with for 30, 30 years, married for 25, eight kids by the same woman. I got to look around, man, and smell the coffee and know that, hey, man, God is with you. God can make anything happen in your life. You know what I'm saying? And I look back 25 years later, I've been through a rocky road in my life, man, as we all have. But you know what? This, this is, you know, this music industry is what we do, but that's not who we are. Who we are, you got a lot of fam fathers, hip hop fathers that's out there. You got a people out there that still, you know, dealing with certain things and, 
you know, it's a re real, real world on the same side. So, you know, with this particular particular project, it's a blessing because, you know, me and my wife, who's the vice president, big up to Lady Cocaine, you know, who's been out here grinding with my boy DJ King Assassin, and we built up this thing for like six years. And sometimes, you know, you can't rush perfection. You know, in order to get, in order to receive a blessing, you know, going back to getting on bending knees, when I received that blessing, man, I just, I just plant a seed. So for all those who listening out there, you know, one thing you can learn about cocaine is not the fact that I'm on a lot of stuff, but the simple fact that, hey, you need some type of family stability in this game because the wild of the devil is going to take you and new level, new devils out here. So you got to be able to have that balance. And that's the way I'm able to survive by simply just giving God all the glory and doing my best. I don't have to be perfect when I'm giving God the glory. That's why I'm straight now. Now, did that. Now, you the king all day, man, and you laid down the foundation. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no way in hell anybody can speak G Funk without paying homage to the king. But who do you see um, out there right now that could be a, a torchbearer, you know what I'm saying, for the G, for the G Funk um, sound? Well, I want to say, I want to say first and foremost, I got to give him respect to my beloved brother, Nate Dog. Nate Dog was the king of G Funk in his own right. And, you know, me and him used to sit back and laugh because a lot of people used to try to compare us. I'm like, <laughs> man, I'm okay. You, me, dog. You sound like me. I don't sound like you. You don't sound like me. But at the same time, you know, still sharp and steel, man. And I got to give it up to Nate, dog, because he, you know, he he had an impact as far as spreading the chief on sound, him and Warren, Warren G. And as far as they're concerned, Dr. J and Battle Cat and all of, you know, DJ Quicks and Hutch. You know what I mean? But Nate Dog, man, you know what I'm saying? Pound for pound. If that brother was still living, you know what? I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even put on anything that, 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 that said with King of Chief on out of respect of his body of work that he's done. I might have done more work than the brother, but to put it in a humble way, man, that brother was a blessing and blessed a lot of artists out there, man. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, I just got to give it up to Nate. And it's a lot, lot of cats out there that I love. But, you know, at the end of the day, I put on that old school, man. And I, you know what I'm saying? I always will love Nate Dog. And still sharp and still. I taught him a lot. And he showed it, told me a lot. I mean, rest in peace, Nate Dog, all day long, man. Once again, this is One West Magazine, One West Radio. We live in the charge, man, and doing it real, real big with my man, Cocaine. We also got the legendary Mr. Show Chop in the house, man. It goes down like that, and you do know that all day long. Now, any quick shout-outs, Cocaine, that you want to give to the streets? Well, man, I want to say God bless everybody there, out there. It's a lot of crazy things that's going on in the streets, you know, Chicago, New York. Uh, out here, up here in the Northwest, my hometown, Cali. You know, San Bernardino is going wild out there. It's just a lot of things. You know, I, all I want to say, going to 2016, with the frame of mind of being positive, because it's too life is too short out there. You know what I'm saying? To start reflecting on why you're here in the first place, and, and that's to survive. You know what I'm saying? And that's to live with joy, and that's to hug your babies at the end of the day because there's too many soldiers out there dying senselessly for nothing. You know what I'm saying? So my thing to you is that God bless everybody out there in 2016. You know what I'm saying? I support you and thank everybody out there for supporting me. Big ups to my brother for life, OG Suicide, YouTube D, One West, you know what I'm saying? It's saying in a nutshell, if we're not One West, then we ain't seeking unity because the house divided, the house will fall. In 2016, I'm going into this whole thing with a positive attitude. I put aside everything that anybody did to me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because you gotta realize, sometimes stop looking at failures as failures. Look at people in your life as blessings, whether they did you wrong or did not do you wrong. But what don't kill a nigga will always make a nigga strong. So that's my advice to everybody up there. Stay 10 toes down, follow your boy, Cocaine official, K O K A N E official. Follow Mr. Short Chop, Mr. Short at Mr. Short Chop, spell K H 
whole tape, you know what I'm saying, at the end of it. And just, you know, celebrate good music. You know, West Coast is in the house. You know what I'm saying? I'm back with the dog father door. Suspect dates and tour dates right now. So big ups to 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 uh to, to my comrade. You know, we came a long way. Big ups to uh, RMM. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people I can name out there. Big shots out to Big, big Percy to all day long. World. Big ups to Big you know Percy, man. Saying? One West Love. Big up. Yeah, man. My guy, my guy, my brother is really doing some things. You know, you be seeing that RMM floating around. RMM does it again. So salute to him and Dog and the LBC movement and Pete Down movement. You know what I'm saying? LA movement out there. It's just nothing but unity right there. Now, you know, before, now, now before we went, I want to make sure we touched on this right quick. Now, your movement, Buddy Boy Entertainment. Now, tell us about some of the artists that's on that um on that roster right quick. Oh, man, I got some cold, cold cats on there. First of all, I got, it's a pleasure to see my daughter on there. You know what I'm saying? It's always, as, as a father, I'm proud. You know, and I got my local on there from both side. You know, Baby Low, you know, he's got down with me, stay loyal. Yeah, that I do do stain. Yes, sir. You got to do this thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I got my, you know, my little cousin, you know, GD the Beast Boy. You know what I'm saying? And we just, you know, plant them seeds carefully, man, you know? And, uh, you know, the thing about the Buddy Boy moment, we here to get love. And there's nothing selfish about us. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we here for. You know, we go to the people. Because at the end of the day, the streets run this shit. And that's what the King of G Funk album is about. We're going back to that Funk Up on the Rod, Uncle Sam's Curse. Back when music had substance, you know what I'm saying? Because we lost our damn minds. And one last thing, I got to say big ups to the youngsters who kind of switch it up and going back to the elements that paved the way for them. So your YGs, your Kenzie Pomars, your Nipsey's, your J-Rocks. Man, I love that they put that G-Funk and soul music really into their stuff. Yeah, so yeah, anybody yeah. that want to get it cocaine, it ain't about just the OG thing, man. We got to put a fresh pair of legs on the court and, 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 and say farewell to Kobe Bryant. You get a nice return, but I'm here for the youngsters as well because they are next generation. So salute to my young OGs, young Gs, I mean, from the West Coast. For anybody that's pushing that line, legendary cocaine. It was an honor to have you, cocaine. Man, thanks. And big ups to uh, uh, my guy, Taylor, out there, my cuzzo. Uh, he got that black godfather with all those all stars coming soon, 4187. You know what I'm saying? Big ups to my guy, Meech. Big ups to Battle Cat. You know, just everybody that supported cocaine all these years. You know, my hat off to y'all. You know what I'm saying? God is good. So be good to yourselves. Now, that is there, man. That hot video came out today, man. Plastic surgery. Make sure y'all go and check that out, man. My man Cocaine is doing it big. Got the project. It's the king of G-Funk. You know what I'm saying? It's going down just like that on One West Radio. And you do know that. One West Magazine, One West Radio.